So you're meaning to tell me you bought a smaller boat, you're going to power it with renewable energy, and you bought a sunken boat. How crazy are you? Last time on Abandoned Comfort. What did you think? Sandblaster versus sanding. What does a better job? Absolutely sandblaster. So, our refit plans. We wanted to compact it all into one episode. Yes, we are doing renewable energy. Yes, sailboats used to have auxiliary engines. And yes, buying a sunken sailboat is a bad idea. So don't be like us. Be like the Omics. Be like the Pardees. Be like Adam Voyages. They were the inspiration for this experiment. But at some point in their life, their adventure was an experiment, but they didn't let fear dictate their life. They said, I want to try this regardless of the results. And as you all know by now, our dream is to travel full time in a sustainable manner. And for that, we needed a vessel that was structurally sound and a shell. And that's exactly what we got. In this episode, we'll be talking to the original owner and builder of our new English girl. We'll be going over her full history while we work on the one thing that sunk her, a conventional marine head. For us, we like things simple. We learned that on the old boat. And simple for us is no holding tank and no holes below the water line. So for us, we prefer the cat box. Call a composting head whatever you want, but after actually having used both a conventional marine head and a composting head, to us, it's a no-brainer. So without further ado, please enjoy this conversation with the true master DIY craftsman, the builder of our boat, Gary. Before we bought this boat, I did a little bit of digging on the owner's group mm -hmm. forum. For Samuel L. Morris. Yeah, and I found the original owner's contact information. So let's call him. Hello. Hi, Gary, this is Ryan Dietrich. Hi, yeah, I recognize the uh, area code. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm out here in New Jersey, and that's actually where Jacqueline is now. Oh, so it's still Jacqueline, is it? Yeah, yep, at least for the next month or so. <laughs> so let me ask you, Ryan, what is the, what's the condition of uh, what, she, what, she, what she looks like? <laughs> She's yeah. beautiful. It looks like you just finished her back in 1988 again. <laughs> yeah, the interior does. The, the exterior, uh, it's, it's definitely not bad. Teak we, looks good. Yeah, the teak looks really good. I think she's the only Falmouth cutter that has teak decks. Yeah, I decided I had had a Troy Lee Offshore 40 that I lived on for eight years. Yeah. And uh, it was, uh, you know, I really like teak decks, especially if you don't mess around with them, put the stupid oil all over yep. them. Yep, yep, yeah. Just keep them up. Uh, now, when I when I did those teak decks, I went, I bought teak, I was at a source for teak logs. And, okay. uh, you know, they're just the great big, the great big uh, solid logs and stuff. And I set those up. And while I was building the boat, they actually, you know, I thought the boat was going to take me like maybe two years to build. Of course, it took me <laughs> Yeah, of course. And hours, that type of thing. So they sat up for a long, long time and they were very, very stable. They were, you know, undercover. And so and then I started milling them and I made sure that I milled them absolutely vertical grain. And I made sure that I, unlike Grand Banks and Troy Lee, yeah. I set the plugs very, very far down to where there's plenty of wood on top of the plugs. Yeah. So I, I can't. I would imagine there is no plugs popping the you know, plugs popping on out, showing the heads of the screws. Yeah, none. No. Yep. the The deck looks immaculate, and like I was saying, like we're we're pretty well versed in. It. So we looked at it and. The number one thing for us was we just wanted to make sure that it wasn't sand down. And it looks like the decks haven't been sanded down or anything. They're in really good shape. Oh, great. Yeah. The decks are good. The interior is great. Uh, the, the bad news is the previous owner, he accidentally sunk the boat. Oh, no. Yeah. Yep. But she wasn't down for long. She was only down for, I think, eight hours. And it wasn't his fault. It was the yard's fault. They launched the boat and they didn't ask him what time he wanted to launch it, and he had a seacock open, yep. I think, to the head, and the boat sunk through the head, but the, I'm telling you, the interior still looks absolutely immaculate. He had someone come in and just re-varnish everything, so your craftsmanship is definitely still there. <laughs> 
Yeah, well, that's that's great stuff. So when Larry Pardee came aboard one time, he was in the boat yard where I was uh-huh. building this thing, and he came on board. As he was getting up, he had to step up, uh, and the engine compartment was open. Uh-huh. And uh, he looked down at that thing like that, and I said, well, what do you think? And he said, well, after all the books I've written, I really can't say anything, can I? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so their book, The, the self Self-Sufficient, Sufficient Sailor, I think it was. Yeah, Self Sufficient yes. Sailor. That was in the boat that we bought. And when we bought the the Hallberg, we we had no experience sailing at all. And the uh, the previous owner, he left a bunch of his books behind. And we we owned the boat for about 2 years and I read that and pretty much everything came together for me at that point. <laughs> Actually, the move that we're doing with this boat is we're not crazy enough to not have an engine. We're going to have a small electric outboard on Jack Lena. And we're actually going to sell the, the Universal that's in her right now because it's still in a crate. We're going to be getting rid of that, so we're going to be sticking with Larry. <laughs> uh, well, okay, that's, you know, it's a matter of choice, of course. But yeah, <laughs> yep. One way or the other, but uh, the boat sails very, very nice, and it's a uh, very easily driven hull. Lyle built, uh, you know, designed a very... And, uh, you know, the thing just would sail along, and I, I actually kicked a lot of butt. When we went to launch the boat, there was, Lyle Hess was there, and there was other people and stuff that had been following my progress for a bunch of times. And they all got along, and they all, because they knew the teak decks and the teak, teak cabin sides, uh-huh. you know, and, the, and, the, and everything that I did with it. And I tried to keep everything as light as possible inside, and I cut in the bulkheads, I cut big candle, you know, big ovals out yeah, of the bulkheads, yep. and yep. I covered it up with teak and stuff, you know, to try to yep. get as much weight out. Uh, and uh, But they all drew lines on the side of the boat, uh, <laughs> betting them, you know, where the actual boat would float when we launched it. <laughs> so they had all kinds of bets and stuff. And uh, it uh, actually wasn't very far off our lines. It wasn't too bad at all. And uh, sails just great and stuff. And then when I when I sold the boat, or when I swapped it on out and stuff, they did a survey, of course. Uh-huh. And you know, the, the guy said when you get, had it hauled out in the yard, you know, now they had a travel lift and stuff. And so they picked it on up, and of course, they had a scale on whether or not it was correct or not, but he came and said, you know, this boat weighs 10,000 pounds. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, those, <laughs> those scales are pretty pretty shaky. Yeah. Our old boat, according to that, weighed like 21,000 yeah. pounds. <laughs> and the, the displacement on it's 14,8, so we didn't have the boat that weighed down at all. <laughs> so I, I don't know how much I trust it, but that sounds right for a, a boat lift scale, for yeah. sure. But it still sails, it sails very, very nice and stuff, and I had some very nice sails. I had a made, uh, Hood made them, I think it was Hood made them down in, uh, uh-huh. in New Zealand is where I had them made. Yeah, we, we still have the Hood sails. Oh, do you? Yep. yep. Yeah, they made some nice sails. I had a bunch of sails. I had that thing set up so I could put the, I could put a, actually, uh, do a, you know, a staysail. Spinnaker staysail. I had a spinnaker with a thing. Yeah, we still I have the spinnaker actually... staysail. Oh, do you? Yep. yep. Do you have a spinnaker? Uh, there's a flasher. I don't know if there's a spinnaker, though. Is there a spinnaker? Yeah, there was a spinnaker and stuff, and I, I figured out I could fly almost a thousand square foot of sail. Oh my <laughs> gosh. Wow. Wow, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, hanging, hanging everything up on it like that, you know? Yeah. Wow. Does it still have the dolphin head on the head of the tiller? It does. Yeah, yeah, it's still there. All, all yeah, of the, I, all the woodwork is still in great shape. Yep. I carved that. I, I started. Uh, I was uh, flying down in New Zealand, and this guy that I, this antique shop I used to go into, uh, you know, because I used to look for things in antique books and stuff like that. Uh-huh. And, uh huh. And he had a. Uh, he, he said one day, he said, "You might get a kick out of this." And he opens up, and I've still got it. It's a little, it's a cigar box, and then it's a cedar cigar box. And when you open it up, it had these uh, miniature hand carving tools that were in there. They were uh, beautifully made. Uh, there's about uh, 12 of them, and they they have uh, you know the different shape bl- uh, blades on, them. and they they had uh, beautiful rosewood with brass ferrule handles on them, wow. and uh, you know, all rounded handles. 
and uh, when I bought that, and I just, you know, so I thought, well, maybe I can. So I started getting some books on wood carving, uh-huh. and so that's that's where that all started and stuff. And actually, that little dolphin head, I took the, you know, I took the piece of teak that was laminated up and stuff, and uh, and I actually took that down to New Zealand and uh, and Australia, and I I carved those. I was carving that in my hotel room. Oh wow! Wow. Back and forth a few times and stuff. <laughs> and so actually, I was working on it on the airplane too. Wow! <laughs> so I had some wood chips all over the place and stuff. <laughs> so was woodworking a hobby, or did you work in the field? No, wood, I mean, uh, no. Actually, I I really hadn't done much, but of course, I had the offshore forty, and I maintained that. Yeah. <laughs> everywhere and stuff and yeah so I was uh, you know I was doing that kind of stuff the story that we heard was that the original owner of this boat was a custom cabinetry worker <laughs> and that's yeah. that's how the interior became so beautiful so <laughs> that's definitely not the case then uh, right that was all just first first time first first attempt at stuff and uh, no that's awesome so uh, no I never had built a, I never even built a table <laughs> <laughs> I started this one. Uh, my father was pretty handy doing stuff, actually, after he retired. Uh-huh. He's gone now, but he he was pretty good at building stuff around, and he built, you know, tables and chairs and different things like that for the neighborhood and stuff. And so, I don't know, I, I never did get into it, but, I mean, I'd watch him sometimes and stuff, and maybe, maybe the fact that, you know, he had a knack for doing that, because he didn't do that as a living. Yeah. Maybe it just, just to, you know, I... I got the same blood. Yeah, it's yeah, in your blood. It's in your blood. <laughs> so, what's the what's the history with her? What's what's the name, Jacqueline? Is that your wife? Yeah, gotcha. the actual original name, and I had already carved it in a cross, but then I met her. Uh, she's a Pan Am flight attendant, and uh, uh-huh. uh, that's her middle name. And so, I had the original name for the boat and original name that I had carved across there. And I'd gotten out of the uh, Lloyd's Registry of Boats from England. Okay. Was English girl. Okay, that's okay. yeah. We were confused about that because we read all of the the Falmouth Cutter newsletters before we bought the boat. We we really like to go pretty deep into our research, <laughs> so we read all of the the postings that you had in the Falmouth Cutter newsletter, and we saw that you called her English girl, but the interior said Jacqueline. So we we thought that. Maybe someone renamed her at some point or something, yeah. but that that makes sense. So uh, when I met her, and I, I decided that uh, is is the uh, is is that is that glass uh, still in the forward port? It is. Yep. Yeah. And so is the yeah. compass rose. Yeah, compass rose on the the companionway hatch. Yep. Oh yeah, that was that's actually that's actually the guy that did that, the artist that did that, and knew how to do it. We have all the sandblasting and all that stuff. Uh-huh. He, uh, uh, he took, that was actually from, uh, from uh, uh, that's my wife. <laughs> <laughs> well done, then. <laughs> well, that sucked. No, no, no. The phone call rocked. The phone call rocked. The camera <laughs> dying during our 45 minute phone call sucked. <laughs> I don't even know how much we missed in that, but the gist of it is. This is absolutely awesome. <laughs> there yeah. were so many things that he told us that we had no clue about and no probably clue. never would have found out. No. The pinnacle for me. The dream team? Yeah, the dream, the dream team was <laughs> on board this boat at some point, so Larry Party showed up. Probably the most true party fashion <laughs> opened up the engine room and was just like, eh, I don't know if I can like this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, well, you've read my books. <laughs> yeah, you've read my books, so you know my opinion on this. <laughs> So that was pretty cool. And her PRHF score, I think you said? Yeah. He's a big racer, so we're not too familiar with what it means, but apparently like her size to her speed is off the charts. Like she would have won every, and he said that she won like a lot of races yeah. that he had against J-boats and other things, so. With the spinnaker? Sta- yeah, the stasel spinnaker. Yeah. He said he could almost get a thousand, a thousand. square foot of sail area up on the boat. That's insane. So we got his email. <laughs> We're definitely going to stay in touch with him. I mean, we just had a 45 minute conversation of just a, a, a cold phone call. Yeah. And me on his voicemail being like, hello, 
Um, <laughs> I think I bought your Falmouth cutter. I have no idea if this is the correct number. No, no. 